Welcome to the video. In this video, I want to talk about this thing here. This is the Matek F405 wing. Now, the Matek F405 as a flight controller has been around for quite a while, but we're starting to see flight controllers coming out now, specifically designed for fixed wing and specifically designed for iNav. Now, you need to be a little bit careful when you open this because there's really dinky little screws that you don't want to lose. But we'll put those to the side for the moment. Let's get the main event out of this little packet. Now, we recently did the iNav build where I put a F35 Lightning flight controller in there. And that was pretty straightforward and it's working great. But there were a couple of things in that build that I would have liked to see on that flight controller. And I'm very, very interested to have a look at this because it appears that they've been sorted out in this thing. Now, this is actually a three board construction. The middle part is the actual flight controller. Then you have a bottom board, which is perfect for kind of putting double sided foam or mounting it inside your fixed wing aircraft. And then you have a top board, which is kind of just protecting everything really. And you can remove that, but it's got all the legend on here, which is handy for letting you know what all of these connectors are. There's even some under there. Hopefully you can see it. So let me just very quickly talk about the specs of this thing. So this is a F4 based flight controller. It has an MPU 6000 six axis gyro and accelerometer in here built in on screen display. It's got a BMP 280 barometer uh, micro SD card black box, which you may be able to see just there. Six UARTs. So we're not going to run out of UARTs to plug things into on here, which is great. One soft serial and two I squared C ports as well. Now I love I squared C for a couple of reasons. And I squared C tends to be the things that you put external compasses and OLED panels into so you can have those little displays on your model. In fact, I talk about I squared C and what you have to be a little bit careful of in this video here. This was talking about the best practice when uh, building iNav wings and planes in particular. But it's great to see I squared C on this. So that's something I really missed on that F-35 flight controller. We have two motor outputs, so it'll take a three to six S LiPo input for the battery. And then we have two lots of battery connectors here on the outside. So if you are going to use a dual motor setup on your wing, plane, whatever it is, then you can support this. The current sensor on board will support a whopping 104 amps, which is excellent. On board as well, there's an awful lot of power here, specifically designed for environments where you're going to be running servos and not just speed controllers. So there's a 5 volt BEC that has a 2 amp continuous rating, maximum of 3 amps. There's a 9 volt BEC in here that's going to run 2 amps. And there's also another BEC that can be run at 5 volts, 6 volts or 7.2 volts with a whopping 5 amps. So this little fella actually has an awful lot of power and has been specifically designed for planes and wings rather than some of the other options that have been out there that we've been using. But this is a bit more of a heavyweight fella. The iNav target for this one is the Matek F405 SE. So if you're going to be flashing it, then that's the one you need to think about. And we have a nice vertical connector as well. So why am I so interested in this? Well, it's the first flight controller that I've really seen that has thought about what we as pilots need in a fixed wing model with the ability to route the power through here and the fantastic options for all the different voltages at nice high amperages to run servos, GPS units, receivers and all that jazz. It's really showing that they've put a bit of thought into it. I love the fact it's supporting two motors. The majority of us won't be bothering with that. But if you wanted to put this inside something like a bush mule or one of those planes that have more than one motor, then that's going to dramatically reduce the amount of cabling that you need to do because you can wire it directly onto here. Seven servo outputs should be easily enough. And with that nice beefy power supply, we shouldn't be getting into a situation where we're going to have an issue. And even if a servo does have an issue and starts to pull down the servo voltage line, it's not going to reboot the flight controller. Again, big fan of the I squared C ports. Uh, there's one that's only designed here. The first one by the side of the USB connector uh, in the diagrams 
for the connection. It talks about that only being useful for an external sensor. However, checking with the iNav development team, that is the default target if you wanted to put an OLED display on there as well. And that's something I would definitely be interested in with putting this inside a plane. A couple of things you're going to need to be aware of though if you look at this thing. Of course it's physical size, it's much larger than a standard flight controller. Let me grab a standard flight controller. So you've got the same kind of mounting spacing for screws that go through the whole thing, but you've got this extra bit front and back. So there may be instances where this might not fit in a battery bay. So a bit sad, I can't use this in something like that really nice Kaipaina 2 because that would be a perfect plane to have a crack at this in, but it isn't going to fit without me cutting lots of foam out. So I will still stay with the flight controller that I intend to use with that build. You are going to need to be good at soldering. You get the ground, the positive and the signal pins as well. And I'm gonna have to sit and very gently solder all of these in, making sure that I observe the polarity for each of these connections. And if you're not into soldering, then that is going to make your blood run cold. And then finally, there's no real detailed manual. There is some fantastic information on their web pages that show you how to connect everything up. But if you wanted a step by step of what you plug where, that isn't available. But with the information on the Maytech website, there's more than enough there if you've done at least one build before for you to get this thing all connected up. Maytech here have made the flight controller that I've been asking board designers for for ages. A nice chunky 5 volt supply for the servos, loads of servo outputs, vertically mounted USB, I squared C connections, the ability to monitor the current, all the sensors that we need with none of the sensors that we don't, designed specifically for fixed wings and for iNav. So props to Maytech for getting this board out. I just need to find a model that this will fit in. If you found that video useful or like the content, then please hit the like and subscribe button down below. If you want to go the extra step, you can become a Patreon of the Painless 360 channel and help provide support for what I do here. All the videos created here are put into playlists, so if you're interested in a particular topic, have a look at the playlist, and they all are organised in there to make them easier to use. If you're not sure if there's a video for your particular problem or topic you want to know more about, then add Painless360 to the Google search term that you're interested in, and that should find the video, article, or content about the particular thing that you're interested in having a look at.